A lot of people seem to think that working in tech is only for software engineers. That's not true. People also always assume that mechanical engineers only work with HVAC and dirty, oily engines. Although you can, that's not all mech jobs. A lot of my classmates and I used to classify mech jobs into two categories. One is dirty mech jobs, and the second is techie mech jobs. I'm not belittling either one because they're both good. That being said, most people I've met in mechanical engineering want those techie mech jobs because they're cleaner and they tend to pay more, a lot more. So let's go over the five step plan on how mechanical engineers can get into tech. Also, this plan assumes that you wanna work as a mechanical design engineer in tech because you can also study mechanical engineering but end up working as a product manager or a TPM in tech. Anyways, first you need to learn to CAD. There's a bunch of different software that you can get started with like Onshape, SolidWorks, Fusion 360, FreeCAD, etc. The easiest and highest quality ones to get, in my opinion, are Onshape and Fusion 360. I'll put links to them in the video description. SolidWorks is the one that's most commonly used professionally in jobs, but it's really hard to get for free. So it doesn't matter which one you choose to go with, just pick one. If you're a student, Onshape or Fusion 360 are probably your best bet because you can get them for free. Now, there are two ways to go about learning how to CAD. First, some universities give you access to LinkedIn Learn. Learning. You can go on the website and you'll find tutorials for how to go about using a particular CAD software. They'll teach you the basics like how to make basic shapes to complicated stuff like how to design an engine. Second, if you don't have access to LinkedIn Learning because it does cost some money, uh, you can use YouTube tutorials. There is stuff for complete beginners and tutorials to learn some pretty complicated stuff like making really complex mechanisms or structures. Honestly, just follow along those tutorials and it'll build something that you can maybe 3D print later on and then you can put that on your resume or portfolio just to get yourself started. Just practice using the software because at the end of the day, that's what companies hire you for. Like in simple words, they hire mechanical engineers to design 3D objects and create 2D engineering drawings. So practice a lot on your own to get good at making stuff like that. Step two, apply to small startups. I'm talking about companies that just started and probably have very little funding or revenue. They're usually not picky at all with who they hire because they already have a limited budget. They're looking to hire people to help them build their products as cheaply as possible, whereas you're looking for someone to give you work even if you have no experience. And you shouldn't be picky on pay at this point. So it's a perfect match. Now, how do you find these companies that will hire you with no experience? There are three ways. First, use LinkedIn to find these kind of startups. For example, let's say you're interested in a startup like this one. Definitely reach out to them by contacting recruiters or engineers that work on their team. And if you go under the people section for that company, you'll find all the people that you can contact. Shoot them a cold message and hopefully someone will respond. But don't just stop there because if you go to the pages people also viewed section, you'll find other startups that you can contact that are pretty similar to the one that you just liked. Once you click on one startup, we'll show you more similar ones and once you click on another one, you'll see even more. So that rabbit hole just keeps going on and on. Second, look for startups that are connected to your university in some way. Maybe a student design team is looking to hire interns or maybe one of the upper years at your university started their own startup and they're looking to hire younger engineers to help them get the product going. You're where they used to be a few years ago, so they'll be happy to help you out. You can also talk to professors or TAs to see if they can connect you with people like that. Third, look through startup accelerators. They're usually like a really big office space that houses a bunch of small startups that are just starting out. They give them mentorship, help them build a network, and even help them with money. Some examples of startup accelerators include Y Combinator or Plug and Play. Pick one of these startup accelerators, go to their website, and they'll show you a list of all the startups that they help. You can go through that list, see what startups interest you and then you can go to their website contact them or apply for jobs at those startups but just shoot them a message asking if they're hiring or if you can maybe even offer to work for them for free you do this enough times eventually some small startup will want to interview you and potentially give you a job offer. As you go through these three methods, you should kind of be bringing everything back to LinkedIn. Anyone you get in contact with, try to get their information and find them a LinkedIn, then you can keep in contact that way and potentially message them again 
through that platform. If you wanna know exactly what message to send them on LinkedIn, check out this video I made that kind of goes over that. For some context, my first internship was between May to August 2017. I worked for three startups in the span of four months and I got paid $3,000 for that amount of work. It was not a lot of money because $3,000 for four months of work is like nothing. But I learned a lot and it helped me get internships later on. The first two startups had less than 10 people working there and the third startup had between 15 and 20 people. If you're curious, the first startup was called Brilli, the second one was called Helpware, and the third one was called Access Labs, but they recently changed their name to Rise. So if you're looking to stand out, there's a ton of tools out there that can help, one of them being careerists who are sponsoring this part of the video. If you just want to enter a career in tech, one of the fastest ways to do so is to get into QA, sales engineering, or UX slash UI design. So Careerist offers online boot camps in these fields to help you get started. It's not just a boring course that you have to sit through not knowing if you're going to get a job by the end of it. They'll give you one-on-one -on -one career coaching, a real-life internship, and support with your job search. They also have instructors that have worked in big tech like Apple, Meta, and Reddit. So you know you're learning information you can actually use in the real world. In the US, people that have taken their courses were able to land jobs in these cities and half of those jobs were work from home or remote jobs for example they have a manual QA course that's 15 weeks long and graduates earn between 69k to 105k USD it comes with personalized guidance from experienced coaches and here are some of the modules in the program so if you want to make a tech salary you can take the first step by following the link in the video description for 10% off next step three take your small startup experience and use it to apply to traditional companies. That includes companies like Toyota, GM, or Magna. They hire thousands of engineers every year and they're not as competitive as Apple, Google, or Tesla. The reason it's important to work for traditional companies before working for a big tech company like Apple is for two reasons. First, they have easier interview questions because honestly, the technical questions for traditional companies are not technical at all. It's usually behavioral stuff. Second, you learn things that are pretty practical that you'll never get taught in school like how to deal with vendors that work halfway across the world. You never learned that in school, but you need that for jobs at tech companies. To get a job at traditional companies, there are two things that you can do. First, attend employer info sessions where you can talk with recruiters there and share with them your resume and portfolio and just talk a little bit about yourself. You should have, you know, that one internship experience at least under your belt that you can talk about. You also have maybe a good amount of engineering school experience at this point, so that's something else you can mention. I'm sure every university has employer info sessions like that at the beginning of the school year, so make sure you attend as many as you can, at least just to build your network if not to get a job. Second, to get seen by these traditional companies, you can also try messaging recruiters or engineers that work for these companies on LinkedIn, expressing your interest in working for them, maybe sharing your resume or portfolio that way instead of just purely applying on their website. For some context, this is what I did because my second internship was at a traditional company called Ecobee. I worked there from January to April 2018. Arguably, they are a traditional company. When I was there, I made $24 an hour and I learned a lot of practical skills that I wasn't able to put towards preparing for my technical interviews for big tech companies. Step four, it's time to take the shot. By that, I mean it's time to start applying to tech companies now. You already worked at a small startup and you worked at a traditional company, so why not go for your dream tech company now? If you started the five-step plan I mentioned from your first year of university, then probably your first internship was at a small startup, your second internship was at a traditional company, and now your final internship in your last year should be ideally at a big tech company of your dreams. Or if you started this five-step plan after you graduated university because your engineering school didn't really do internships during your undergrad, then maybe in the first year or two you worked at a small startups and then afterwards you spent another year or two at a traditional company and now you're getting ready to apply to those tech companies because you've built a decent amount of engineering experience. You know, you now have at least two years of experience that these tech companies can ask you about. These tech companies will ask you technical questions in 
the interviews. There will probably be multiple rounds of interviews and you'll probably have to do some design challenges. Make sure to review your mechanical engineering fundamentals with topics like GDNT, statics, materials, and manufacturing methods. I have a bunch of interview notes that I always prepare and review before my technical interviews, so put a link to those in the video description. And for some context, I got my first big job offer at a big tech company when I was in my final year of engineering. I got it from Tesla. Moving on, step five is the resume and portfolio. This isn't really the final step, but more like what you should be doing throughout the entire process. As you go through step one, two, three, and four, you're constantly building experience and you need to make sure to always be putting and updating your resume and portfolio. So put that experience on your resume by explaining what you did, how you did it, and the results. Also make sure to include a portfolio that has images of all the projects that you worked on throughout your work experiences. As many as you can include, of course. Because trust me, a portfolio goes a long way. That being said, this five-step plan is just a general outline where you start working for a small startup that probably will pay you like shit but it needs all the help they can get and slowly work your way up to big tech companies like apple or tesla who will probably pay you maybe 60 an hour or 45 an hour respectively to kind of go through this five step plan it may take you anywhere between two to four years depending on how diligent you are or how much work experience you got or honestly even sometimes luck is involved too but i am confident like if you just keep trying you will get it you will get a job where you work as a mechanical design engineer at a big tech company. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. If it did, check out this video where I talk about my experience working for startups or check out that video where I talk about how to message people on LinkedIn to actually get them to respond. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.